Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode. Episode 52, one year. Congratulations. You made it. You made it, team, of a gaming podcast. I'm here with Camille. Camille, how's it going? Good. Wait, we've been doing this for a year? Over a year now. But this is like the 52nd episode, so this is like the year. Where's the time gone? What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. We talked about this last week. You were in the episode. <laughs> yeah, but I thought like we were still doing, like, I didn't realize it's like an actual year. Have we yeah. been doing this for a year? That's know, what right? I'm saying. <laughs> Wait. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Wait, Wait you're, you're engaged? engaged? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. 52 weeks in a year? Yeah. No, I just, I don't know Wait, how, you know? but my mind on this earth? me like on this earth. 52. It's, like, it's I don't crazy. know. I, on, I this, on, know. on, on the Gregorian cool. calendar? Is, yeah. is, are we talking? <laughs> is, this, is this the right calendar? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing great now that I got my times like checked because I didn't realize a year has passed. Wow, this has been I great, know. guys. What was great. the actual date? Like, what was the actual date of our first uh, episode? I have to find that out. But uh, this, you know, talk I'm going to look. It. I'm going to look it up. You, you <laughs> do your talk about yourself. I'll look it up. Oh, Here's your okay. intro. What are you talking about? Oh, I passed. I <laughs> thought I was done. I'm doing good. I've been playing a lot of Astrobot, as I think like. Uh, a few of us have been, um, but yeah, I don't yeah, think we're talking been... about that today. That's what yeah. I'm just <laughs> Wait, what? What? I'm joking. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Camille. <laughs> Come on, Camille. Come on, Camille. Come on, Camille. Man, you're supposed to be doing great. Camille's is going great. great. One of the galaxies with Astrobot. Right now. She's, She's still with Astrobot. It's going yeah. great. I'm in yeah. like a warp galaxy right now. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Boost, my man. How are you doing? Good. Glad to be back. Sorry, I missed out on a couple of weeks, but okay. I, I wanted to be here to talk about Astrobot, so I'm really excited to get into that in a bit. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Steve Bot, what's going on? Yeah, I'm uh, doing good. Uh, had some fun little announcement stuff uh, mm -hmm. happening, and then, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just excited to talk about Astrobot today. Cause congrats, congrats, Steve, on his yeah. work. In Star yes. Wars Outlaws. Star Wars, yes. they finally announced it. Finally I can know. talk about it. They've also announced, I think, over, over Fan Expo weekend that you've joined the PlayStation Playmakers program, yeah. which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I've, al out. I've also been officially uh, immortalized as a character in... Uh, in, in Plucky Squire. Uh, Ooh, hell yeah, was, looking forward to that game. Yeah, hold on. I'll, I'll bring it up so the, the, the viewers can can watch this. But uh, yeah, there's. Uh, I've been oh officially... my god, that is amazing! It's very Steve. Very I know, right? Yeah. You know, if, if you were, if there were to be a Steve bot in Astrobot, I feel like it would that almost would look be like it. that. I'll be it right. There. It kind of would. Yeah. It would have yeah. that, like, yeah, white beard <laughs> it, for sure, like 100. percent But yeah, it. no, this was Love drawn it. by the uh, uh, the official artist of of Plucky Squire. So uh, cool. I. Uh, I got that yesterday, and I was like, "Is it okay? I can post post this." And they're like, "Yeah." So I was like, "Awesome!" That's so yeah, so no, cool. it's been a good week for Steve. Uh, Steve bought. The, uh, I am not week. in any games. But if there's anybody out there wrong. who wants to put me in a game, I am. You know, <laughs> I, I even given permission. Free agent for, over like, here. Just throw my face in a game. I don't care. I, I don't sign anything. Just I gotta have face. something cool over you, Caboose. You get <laughs> to do right, all the cool yeah. stuff. So. <laughs> I think Kubo's right. Didn't you just come back from somewhere? I did. Yeah. Yes. No. I was actually in Germany for Gamescom. I'm sad that I oh, missed yeah. out on last week's episode. I was feeling Yeah, but you got to be weather. Batman, so that's okay. Yeah. I got to be I mean, literally, if there were ever a time to like say the meme from IGN <laughs> reviews of like it makes you feel like Batman, Arkham Shadow is without a shadow of a doubt the game of the pun. Oh, I see what nice. you yeah. did. There. Uh, I didn't yeah. even no, I didn't I do that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. you got to he you got to meet that. He was Batman. Batman. Yeah. And I got to meet to plan that sentence out. And I got to meet <laughs> the Roger Craig Smith, that which is, is a really so cool, cool moment. Oh, hell um, yeah. He's super, super kind as well. You know, and what I think what blew my mind the most was like how quickly he he goes from I'm like, oh, that's Roger Craig Smith too. Oh, that's that's Batman. Like you know, just, he just slips <laughs> in like me, he goes yeah. on a dime. For me, he's Sonic the Hedgehog. I know oh, for a lot of people, crazy. Sonic <laughs> among many other voices that he is well known for. It's so crazy. Um, but yeah, playing that game was really, really awesome. Um, don't want to go too much into it because we have a lot to talk about today, but I'm really, really excited for the game. I'm really looking forward to it. And for anybody who is doubting it, 
it, it's an Arkham game, like through and through. Okay. Everything about it from what I played was like, this is an Arkham game. Yes, it's VR. Yes, it's different from our third person action adventure Arkham games, but it has all the elements that you would recognize from Arkham. It has the, the counter system. It has the combat, the predator encounters, you know, some great stealth combat there too. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It's really good. And it feels smooth. I'm really excited for the launch. I just hope that the story is good and it adds some great lore to the universe. But outside of that gameplay, I am not worried about in the slightest. Out of just oh. curiosity, how was like Gamescom as a whole, like being your first compared to like all the conventions we have here? <laughs> if I'm being honest, um, I mean, it, it's cool to experience just once in a lifetime, right? Like you're in Germany and Cologne is, is such a beautiful city. Um, but it was busy. It was busy. Yeah. It's a little confusing to, to get around. There's a lot of different halls. It did like when I was in some of the main like entertainment halls, like it gave me that little flashback to E3, yeah. um, seeing like these massive booths with all these giant lights and, and, and stuff going on for all these different games. And it was a big booth for Assassin's Creed for Star Wars Outlaws. Xbox had a massive presence there. Lots of really cool stuff to see. So it, it was fun for that reason. But um, I, I feel like I've gotten my fix from Gamescom. I don't. I, I I will now, unless there are opportunities. Obviously, I will now just enjoy it uh, from home, from going on, from here on out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. By the way, it's August seventeenth, Camille. Last year. I have August fifteenth. I think that's when we. From when like, we. But I think that's when we probably agreed. Uh, uh, okay. Because yeah, on the 7th. doc, it's like August fifteenth. I wow. see. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm talking about August 17th. So it's been okay, a so year and some change since we started. And, yeah, two, three weeks. I don't wonder my oh, memory's man. all messed up. It's already <laughs> been a year. Oh, yeah. Wait, it's been a year? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's coming out this year and very soon, Astro Bot, and a yes. few of you may have played it. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait Nerd to talk away, about this. Bots. Go uh, on. <laughs> but you didn't get a chance to play Marcel yet? I don't have a PlayStation, so that's why. So uh, Marcel! Oh, okay, okay, okay. Fair oh. enough. You're, we gotta we gotta show. we gotta get you. I'm waiting for that pro, you know? Okay. Oh, okay, okay. You, okay. Yeah. you know, enough. uh this is uh to, to kick things off, this is my game of the year pick. Um, wow. If I'm being Damn. really honest. Okay. Uh, I okay. really, really loved this game. It's not like a super long game by any means, but I feel like this just adds more evidence that like those like 10 to 12 hour experiences, sometimes they can hit just as hard as those massive 40, 80 hour triple A games. You know what I mean? And I think that's what Astrobot really did for me. It's just a super fun, charming platformer with some really innovative level design and some just it's just it's adorable like it's it's super charming you know what i mean like there there are all these like different bots that you can collect little easter eggs to other playstation ips i loved it i thoroughly thoroughly loved it and i'm on my second playthrough right now having so much fun yeah i i can't agree anymore like i think it is definitely game of the year contender which just speaks to not needing like a 35 40 hour game to yeah. be a contender for that there's so much personality in astrobot um that like in the character itself like just to him like you know lounging on a chair and falling asleep on a chair if you're idled a little bit or like while he's running he waves to you um to like all of the astrobots which we were talking right before the podcast when they're on the controller and you finish the level they're like bye bye you know bye like bye. Bye, yeah. bye you know like there's so much personality in that but also a lot of personality in the enemies like the enemies are yes. so dynamic it uses the full uh you know ability of the controller in new ways um that feel fresh every time like one of them that stand out to me you know the the like russian doll enemies they're really oh, scary yeah. because yeah. like they just like kind of like their shells like just like zip onto themselves yeah. and it, it like gives me a ter terminator-esque feeling it's just very weird <laughs> but they look so angry and like there's nothing about them that's like cute obviously like everything's a little cute with the astrobot eyes but like they actually look menacing and like when yeah. you take them out they have a little bit of personality to them and it the moles like there's so many little personalities with just the enemies astrobot but also like the little critters throughout the worlds um that's so much fun like i think when we're looking at 
you know, games like this, platformers like this, we're thinking, oh, you know, this is kind of going to be a breeze, but it also offers that level of difficulty and a dynamic way of like thinking of how to approach everything, whether you're trying to collect all the bots in each level or trying to collect the puzzle pieces, you really have to have your eyes open and check every crevice because there's secrets everywhere yes. in every mm -hmm. level of the game. Oh, and, yeah. and that's what I find most interesting. It's like, you know, if you have like a niece or nephew you want to play with, a little sibling you want to play with, they're going to enjoy it. But then you're, if you're older and you're like a more mature gamer, you're going to enjoy it as well because some of the levels are going to be very, very difficult. Yeah, uh, I, I totally, totally agree with everything that you're saying there. And I also like the some of the different stages that you get to play on. The visuals are so beautiful. And, and I think what I love the most about the game is it really is through and through a love letter to yeah. all things everything PlayStation, whether it's the games, whether it's the hardware, you know, it, it's just it's all like if you love this stuff, if you live and breathe PlayStation like this is absolutely yeah. unequivocally the game for you. It's like the little details, like to that visually, yeah. right? Like yeah. when you're uh, blasting off on the controller, it was just such, such a little detail and you could miss it, but you see all the crosses and squares and triangles yes, coming out from right? the boosters and then they so disappear. Good. Like so good. it is, it is so, so good. Like how, like the level of detail is just so good um, that every time you're playing, I feel like you're discovering something new. Like I was saying, there's, you know, at the end of the levels, you kind of hop off the ship and you have to fly off, but you have to initiate that fly off yeah. uh, to the end of the level. I didn't realize for like four or five levels that there's an, a, you could actually like hit a box as you're yes. like, and the end you of 10 level. Coins. Yeah. 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 So it's like, I didn't even realize that. And then it made me want to go back and like, just do that out because I'm like, Oh my gosh, what if I unlock yep. something? Like maybe there's going to be a trophy down the road <laughs> for this, you know? So it, it's just like, there's, you're always thinking about like what you could do next and, and like it's not easy like it's something so simple as like you're jumping on you know the little ladybug they have like these ladybug yeah, enemies yeah. right and you have to jump mm -hmm. on them in order to like jump on their belly to get to higher platforms in the level but usually what you'll see in a platformer you'll jump on the belly and like the ladybug or like whatever you're jumping on will just like go to where it needs to be in order for you to jump to go up higher yep. Astrobot doesn't do that. So no. the ladybug <laughs> flips over and then you have to try to knock it over to the area you want to go, which gives you a lot of options because then you're looking like every platform. But then it's also like very hard if you're you have that on ice and you're trying to like kick yeah. it to the right area and it keeps it's, sliding. That out took of me place. way too long. Yeah. <laughs> line up oh man yeah uh, it, it's it's so cool too because like a lot of the levels have this thing where like sometimes there are these hard to reach areas that don't necessarily have a collectible whether it's a bot or a puzzle piece but it they still reward you you know what i mean like if you get to a hard to reach like whatever building or, or some other tree if you get on top of a tree that you didn't think you could reach there's always a coin there you know what i mean yeah. and it's like this thing where the guys making the game the, the folks at asobi they knew like somebody is going to try to get up this tree or somebody's going to try to get to the top of this building we need to have something there to reward that level mm -hmm. of play and that level of exploration which i thought to be so awesome and i think what's so great too about astrobot the same with astro's playroom is it's such a beautiful showcase of what this controller yeah. is capable of you know this is my favorite controller of any console generation that we've ever had the ps5 controller and yeah astrobot absolutely showcases those those haptic or sorry the adaptive triggers the haptic feedback all of that is in there in spades it's done so well and it adds so much to the experience like you said every time you're blasting off at the end of the level that that little resistance that you get on the triggers yeah it's so fun <laughs> like it feels so interactive i really love that is there like a like a court like a what mode or like another mode if someone wanted to join you in like a little there isn't like, oh, mario no, awesome. sadly no but see, that's the one thing i wanted is like yeah. man i'm thinking like mario galaxy like now where like people are like all right you collect the gems for me you know that yeah thing. <laughs> yeah i was like if this was two player i think that would like it would blow all expectations well it yeah. already does honestly um but i wouldn't want to sacrifice that for the single player experience that you already get like you know there's just so many things like on a 
it, like the walking, just like walking on a rock compared to walking on grass compared to skating on the ice. Like you're feeling that difference in the controller mm -hmm. and it's just so rewarding. So I feel like if they were to add a second player to this, maybe down the road, maybe an Astro Bot 2, um, I wouldn't want to lose any or of hell, those. Even an update. You know, yeah. Yeah. Update, yeah. you know, Ghost of Tsushima no, got a big multiplayer update down the line, so you never nice know. Jeff announcement, <laughs> like, oh, we got more from our little friend, you know, like it's <laughs> two bots, you know. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, and I echo pretty much everyone, uh, like what, what you what you both said. Uh, but I, I think, kind of even going a step further, we've all been sort of saying for a bit uh before even this uh, this game it was announced that would based off of just astro's playroom alone uh and then also even the vr uh, version as well that th this seems to be like playstation's mario um this yeah. is their this is their mascot and there is no better proof of that than this game yeah. uh it is it, it is widely universally more approachable than any other PlayStation game, and I'll explain why. If you notice, there's no dialogue. It's yeah. literally just sound effects. It's reactions. It's every like there is there, there's no language barrier to any aspect to uh, to Astrobot at, at all. And in a sense, that's kind of what for the longest time before really Charles Martinet kind of added the voice to Mario that it was very much there was no language barrier to to mario you could pick up anywhere from anyone around the world could be able to pick up a mario game and know how to be able to play it and not have to worry about uh a sort of like an english translation or a translation into a language that they don't know and astrobot is 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 definitely that um and it is as you said it, it is extremely charming it is such a blast to play i don't know if it's my game of the year as of yet but it is definitely in the top ten for sure. Um, it's a contender. I feel like it's. A I think it's a game of the nominated. year contender. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And yeah. I, I think that for a PlayStation fan, there is a lot here for you to be able to enjoy and to geek out over, and just the Easter eggs that are in there. Yeah, and you could you could explore as much or as little as you want. Yeah, the, te the of course the temptation of trying to find all the bots, trying to find all the puzzle pieces, <laughs> trying to find all the coins, everything that's there. Yes. The, the temptation is there and it is uh, a, a, a sort of, in a sense the the, I don't want to say difficulty, but just the challenge of accessing those things, all of those things is definitely there. This is not a, 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 a complete walk in the park, but it is if you, you know, if you don't, if you can't be able to experience that challenge or you don't want to, it's a little too, there's areas that are a little too hard. It's okay. You yeah. don't have to worry about it. You can just get through the main story. You can get through the level as is. And there, are, yes, there are areas where you need to uh, use a, bo a bots. To, uh, how many bots you have to unlock certain uh, new, like new uh, like areas within a map or yeah. uh, a new ca like uh, capabilities to uh, to uh, basically what you're doing is you're trying to fix your PS5 uh, ship. And uh, but but you can be able to play this without having all the extra bonus stuff and still have a great time. But for those who are who love platforming games, who love just PlayStation in general, there is a t like ton of fun. Like even just some of like the the fun levels that you get. Uh, I won't say which, but I, I could definitely. Uh, it was it was early on where you're kind of transported into this one level with with basically I'll just say it like a butterfly net, and yeah. that oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. was the most charming aspect of like it. It, it, like I didn't, I, I never thought that I would enjoy it that much, and I wasn't necessarily a huge fan of the specific uh, game that it was that was uh, celebrating. But I loved every second of it, and it was yeah. uh, amazing the way the the care and the and the love that Team Asobi has for PlayStation is it's it's astounding. And there's going to be something there, even if you're a, a, a newcomer to PlayStation or uh, a long-term decades old veteran uh, at this point. And it is, I will say for accessibility, not a huge amount of accessibility there. There is some in the settings. You can be able to turn off uh, some of the, uh, more, the more haptic feedback and also the adaptive triggers. That's more done this in the main uh, PlayStation settings. Mm -hmm. uh, if you find that the adaptive triggers are a little too tough, which I actually had to do uh, during certain boss fights, boss fights, because 
they were just a little too much resistance for me to be able to to, to fully enjoy it. Um, and there really there is nothing really there for for b- fully blind players. So it doesn't have all of the accessibility we've come to know from PlayStation mm-hmm. over the past several games. But there's a lot of also accessible design built into the game itself. Like I mentioned, there's no dialogue. So a player who uh, who's deaf and hard hearing can totally play this game 100% because also not only just there's no dialogue, there's no subtitles needed, there's no captions needed, but also anytime that you need to be able to see an enemy, the camera automatically moves always in behind Astrobot. So whatever you turn... You could basically like you could uh, you could even there's a setting where you, if you turn where you're like the, the astrobots facing the, the the TV you can hit you can uh, have a setting you can hit the circle button it'll automatically recenter the camera right in behind uh, right. astrobot which is great and so uh, anytime you're moving the camera is always following you so there is no so, like you're you're getting attacked on to off camera as it were they really tried to be able to include a lot of accessible design without having the need to be able to basically add a lot of options. Mm-hmm. So it's good for accessibility, but it also could use some a little uh, accessibility that they've used in other PlayStation games as well. But overall, this is definitely in the in the uh, like a contender for game of the year. Hundred uh, percent, it is in my top ten of the year for sure. I would deceive save probably in my top five of the year yeah. uh, at this point. And I haven't finished it yet. I'm basically just playing it to enjoy it. I'm not trying to rush my way through it, uh, but it is it is so good. I'd honestly even recommend that what you were saying earlier, Steve, is probably the best way to play it. Just go through the levels. Don't try and like focus hard on like getting every bot and getting because that was my mistake. I am like a hardcore collector collectathon <laughs> kind of guy. Yeah, you know, like for years of playing Batman Arkham games and collecting Riddler trophies has has you know like I, I need everything. I need <laughs> it. I get it. Well. I get it. I'm the so, same. I, I've sort. Of, I'm not a full convert into that just yet, but I'm. <laughs> I feel the itch. I feel yeah. the temptation. <laughs> it's the and point I, where like when I play certain games like open world games with my girlfriend, she's like, "Why are you going down this random alleyway into this random corner?" It's like there might be something. There, you know, I need but to look. I think it's also the game kind of wants you to do that because of how adorable yes. as these astrobots are, and, right? and also just in the way, in the sense that when you collect a bot, it'll show for you in the sequence of bots that are available in this level which one you got, whether it was yeah. the third one, the fifth one, whatever it might be. And so, like, sometimes you get this feeling where you found a bot and you're like, oh my, I did it. I, I found one of the secret collectibles. And it's like the fourth one. And you're like, wait, there were three other ones that I missed. <laughs> That's the worst level. Feeling, man. <laughs> what is like this terrifying the feeling. feeling? It's like, like drop everything. Yeah. Let me go back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, that's why I would say if I would recommend anything, it's like just play through the levels, enjoy the game, experience it. And then just for the added replayability and also for just what it's going to apply to your experience then go back to each level try and go hardcore find all those collectibles it's just gonna it's gonna enhance i think the fun um yeah. but also you could you could just be like me and just every single level you know here's you're not thing. moving on to the next one until you get all the puzzle pieces and all the the bots here's the thing yeah. you could you could pick uh, like what i do is like or uh, what i did i didn't i wasn't necessarily fully on looking for the puzzle pieces i was mostly i need to find all the bots that's that's yeah. my goal yeah but w- in your search for finding the bots you eventually will find some puzzle pieces that's because there's just areas in there that's like oh well that's a good place for for a bot oh no it's actually a puzzle piece if, okay if cool. I had, <laughs> if i had one tiny it's like a super nitpick um Uh one of the collectibles is like you can get like a lost galaxy yeah Um, i couldn't find those at all so so my problem was when you find them you know it takes you out yeah yeah the level you're currently on to then go to the lost galaxy um which means like sometimes the lost galaxy could be halfway through a level and you're like if you're like me you're collecting every bot along the way you're trying to get every puzzle piece along the way and you want to get through to the end but then you find the lost galaxy and you're like oh shoot well i want to collect this i don't want to forget about it Mm -hmm. um and it kicks you out of the level so if i if there's one thing i would recommend in like an update is when you find them it unlocks it and yeah. then after you're done the level, then you can go to the Lost Galaxy. It's like area. pops up on yeah. the map somewhere. And it's yeah. kind of that that I think the first time I encountered it, it was jarring because I was like like you looking for I think a puzzle piece because I got one and it was like the second one and I was like, yeah. wait, where the first one? <laughs> and then I dropped down into the warp uh galaxy and I was like 
wait, I'm on a whole nother level. And yeah, it was like, kind of like, oh my gosh, now I need to like, remember where I was yeah. in the original one. But then because like, that's that reminded me of like some Mario games, like Mario Wonder did that a lot where you're mm. like, oh, you could exit the level yeah. from like here, yeah. but then you have to kind of go back. Go so back, like, I didn't yeah. mind it as much. Um, and because you have that stats tracking of like, okay, I know that I got the warp, but I need three more puzzle pieces. So I just like kind of speed through the first part where I got everything. And then, you know, really took my time at that point where I'm like, okay, this was the last spot I got. Let me keep yeah. going. Um, but, you know, it really is an homage to, you know, PlayStation and the legacy that PlayStation has built. I have a question for you too, though. There's okay. a level early on because like you'll see inspiration from multiple like uh, IPs in the PlayStation universe. There's a level with like, it's like a monkey, like early on a monkey, like temple. It was giving me Donkey Kong vibes. <laughs> sure and I'm not. like, yeah. this is also an homage to like platformers that have come past right like because there are things in that level as well where i'm like oh this is very like mario-esque but not in a like i'm ripping this off kind of way in a like oh this is a nice little homage to it so i feel like you know Sobe may may have done that as well uh, i could see, i, I could think see that, that one i could see that too but i think that one was kind of more it was to like I, I sort of got like uncharted or crash bandicoot kind of vibes okay, with that yeah, fair. so but i understand there, i there totally got, i was like wait things. if i had a donkey kong level but it's like, like yeah it was like a month in that like, level <laughs> weird. Yeah. there are very specific like, things yeah. in that level that like kind of confirm like oh this is paying homage to this you yeah know what I mean? yeah um but i totally see where you're coming from yeah I totally it was it was just from. weird that it was like a donkey is like the forefront of that whole. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's I, interesting. Like, you know, maybe they put little Easter eggs that are like, yeah, little nods here and there to yeah. the platformers past. I, I, I get what you I get what you're to uh, totally saying even with that too because if because we played Astro's uh, playroom which was very each area was kind of like specific to a part of the of the PS5 like each yeah. each level had its own theme based off of that whereas this it kind of it was it feel it doesn't feel as sort of like direct oh this is the this is the uncharted level this is the crash band yeah. like it wasn't like it wasn't that as direct as as the previous game was so i could i i got confused too so don't worry it was it was yeah it just you weren't the only one because I, I was wondering yeah. that too and i'm, I'm like, like what is this and that's part of it too like yeah. playing playing along you're like what is this easter egg where's this bot from like if you haven't played those games there, or are too familiar oh, there was a there lot of those so there's, there's many. some i don't even know if you guys got to the level yet I, I won't even spoil it but there there are some where it was like Oh, like that's totally what they're referencing, and it's not even like actually that IP. I'm being super vague, um, but it's like when you see it, you're like, "Oh, it that's it that's totally that thing," you know, and that's yeah, their yeah. own version of it for this game, which is cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that. I, I think is why I really wanted to to point out. I love the boss battles. I don't know how many of you yes. guys have gone. Through, they were cool. Yeah, but they're super duper fun. Some of them are a little challenging. Yeah. Um, but again, like it, it's all comes down to like really well made design, you know, like some of these boss battles are kind of the right kind of challenge to the point where once you get it, like once it clicks with you, what you got to do or what the objective is, even if you got to take a couple of cracks at it, it's just, again, it's really interactive. It's really fun. And it, you feel like a great sense of accomplishment once yeah. you actually take down one of these bosses. And then what all that leads to every time you do take down a boss is really awesome. It's very special yep. again for people who are fans of just everything PlayStation. I have a question, uh, Steve, because we actually saw Astrobot together mm -hmm. at um, you know Summer Game Fest, um, and one of the things you were wondering about is um, you know how much because with Astro's Playroom it was really centered around the PS5 and like different levels, the hardware. Um, with Astrobot, what we I, feel like what a lot of people seen so far has been like the controller right mm, aspect mm -hmm. of it however there are little easter eggs because you're like man i really want them to like highlight hardware but there are things throughout the game that references hardware um, yes of the console and of consoles past yes for sure like there definitely are some little easter eggs i, I think this one is more geared towards uh the characters from playstation's past uh obviously with the different bots like each each level has its own 
like there because there's a, a certain amount of bots that you collect and then there are special uh bots and you'll see it when you when you kind of are, are getting into a level there's like ones that has the face buttons of playstation uh and there's like three of them that are, are specifically costumed uh for and themed to a specific franchise and they're mostly like all the bots are kind of that are themed to that fra- like they're like in that level are themed to specific uh franchise like and uh, of all playstation pass but there are some fun little uh, uh like easter egg kind of stuff mm-hmm. for for playstation hardware uh, I'll just even say it. It's it's kind of a, a tiny minor spoiler, but it, like literally it's in the, in the first like bit of the game. Your save file is on a PlayStation memory I card. Know! Like I thought that oh, like that was just so dang cute. So cool. That's cool. awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he, he's when he, at the very beginning when you're like I won't spoiler like what to, just to, for the story aspect, but at one point you're kind of uh, when you get to the point where you're going to choose your save file, you see your little Astrobot holding a memory card and just kind of throwing it up in the air, and it's yep. like you get to choose that that is your your save slot, and uh, that I, is I like that got that me world. so much. That got yeah. me so much. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. And, like you have different color options. And I was like, oh, I want this color option, but I'm not yeah. the person to like save and game two slot when there's game one available don't do that exactly that person um (laughs) but but it to that point there is a story that's here that we're not going to spoil but i I think you know it is very simple like xbox nintendo like coming in and like (laughs) (laughs) no 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 no, it's 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 always a little story nothing like that yeah nothing like that they're not you know they're not trying to ignite the console wars in this one but what it, there is a story and it's charming it's cute obviously it's not going to be as deep as something like the last of us but i think like a lot of gamers look to platformers as not being fulfilling like that and again i just can't reiterate how much like you don't need a hardcore game and i understand platformers sometimes see seem like a rinse and repeat they really do have like a unique experience here with astrobot and just and the best part is because i think when astro's playroom came out like a lot of people didn't have plays ps5s to get their hands on it and by the Mm -hmm. time they got ps5s they weren't really going into astro's playroom uh as you know one of the first things that they played they were just hopping into some of the games that they didn't get to experience within the first year of playstation uh 5. so it's like this is really that debut i feel for astrobot and astrobot like making their stance that like they are here to party and like be that face that's right of playstation mm-hmm. going forward and i'm yeah. really excited for the future of astrobot i have the song stuck in my head and it's just such a <laughs> cute thing that i now know how the song begins with someone asking <laughs> astrobot what their name is yeah. and then <laughs> you just hear Astrobot like I am Astrobot, and that's like, like <laughs> yeah. over and over again. And it's so charming. It gives like that. This is my like the game of summer for me. It just gives me that feel of like, oh, this is fresh. This is fun. This is exciting yep. um, to play play with friends like on the couch and pass the controller around um, as well. And it's just like I need every single Astrobot in a little toy. Like I really do hope. That yes. they come out with the little figures. Oh. They had like the big yes. ones. Yes, like an amoeba. Yes, yes. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah, I, awesome. I would give it totally to me. Collect them. I will go so crazy. That's what Here. we need. Hear us. Here's PlayStation. Please. I know, because hold, because hold on, because Camille, we we both saw uh like different. Yeah, uh, yeah, all the different sort of uh, little, like a little like a little astronaut. I'm gonna see if I can uh, if I can I find it. I think I gave you a picture of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to find. The, uh, I'll, I'll find the picture in a second because I'm, uh, I'm going through. But uh, yeah, like they, they the, I really do want like a full on, uh, like d- d- just like a little, just like a little, little, little guy, like just a little, a little guy, like a little oh, plushy yeah. or or something. But anyway, here, here we are. Uh, nice. and I, there you like, like, this is really so nice. cute. What are they? <laughs> what are they doing? What are they doing? I know. Miss opportunity. That. What are you doing? <laughs> I, it's just like they, they like they, they would sell out like crazy. Like yeah. just, just think about how 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 much we all tried to be able to get nicks from Star mm. Wars Outlaws from a freaking well, claw machine. Like they we, people would go nuts this. for that Astrobot. <laughs> yep. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. That yeah. totally missed opportunity for it not to be like the collector's edition yeah. or anything like that for the game. Yeah. I feel like the, the controller was animated. Like while you're playing, oh, I you know. make, like, that would have been cool. emotions as well. It yeah. might fill up the battery. I get it, but you know, it, it was it would be nice to have just this in a way, nice little interactive controller for Astro Bot. Yeah, I'm still yeah. looking. I'm looking yeah. at the PlayStation merch store, and they still only just have T-shirts, a water bottle, some stickers, and water a. Bottle. 
uh, oh, hopefully a, a journal. Hopefully there's, there's a plush, is. though, in stores. I was shopping for my niece recently. And there went is? To, yeah, the toy section. Um, and there was like a little Astrobot plush. And you didn't buy any for us. Well, I was like, I should really buy my gift for my niece rather than get this Astrobot box. Oh, no way. There actually is one at uh, apparently a, a GameStop, I think. Nice. All right. I guess we're all taking PlayStation needs to sell yeah. this. Like, and why, that's why? the end of this podcast. We gotta go pick up. Our <laughs> gotta go pick it up. But, yeah. but you yeah. know what? It, it, I, I I will say, um, in general, like I know PlayStation kind of needed a win um, as of late. <laughs> I know there's been some some unfortunate circumstances. I don't know if we're going to get into that today. Um, and yeah, this, we have it. Um, absolutely, this is like their their biggest win of the year. Absolutely. I just really I really hope that people show up. For, for Asherbot, you know what I mean? Like, this yep. game deserves your time, it deserves your attention. It's not like even Asher's Playroom, I still think is quite good. It's just that I, I know a lot of people see Asher's Playroom as just like a tech demo to demo, showcase yeah. a bit of what um, the PS5 is capable of and especially what the controller can do. Um, while this certainly has features of that, this is a full fledged game. Yes. Um, with tons of stuff to do, tons of collectibles. And yeah, like, okay, so I got the platinum at around 12 hours. I think I've seen that other people have gotten the platinum at around that time, 12 to 15. Um, but again, that that for me is like those perfect little bite sized games that leave such a strong impression are just as good as the myriad of, of 40 to 80 hour AAA experiences out there. Yeah. So, really, I really do hope that a lot of people, PlayStation fans especially, are, are, are going to show up. For Astrobot, it, it really deserves your time and attention. Yeah, I think that I agree. Like the the you know play, yeah, as we said, PlayStation's had its ups and downs. I think it had a lot like uh, obviously Hell Divers being a, a big up for them, but based off the story we're talking about today, that was a big low. But then I think Astrobot is a is a good way to kind of end off the year, and even with sort of the uh, it, it being sort of content light for PlayStation. I think it's actually done okay. Uh, I, I I do wish, kind of in the broader spectrum of things, that Xbox could have taken this year, and I think it still can because it still has a lot of games for the end of the year that we're still looking forward to be able to to play. Uh, indie being one of them, um, and and a few others. But I, I I like I would I would have loved to have seen Xbox sort of like ha this is this was the, this was their year while PlayStation was silent, but. PlayStation ain't, ain't playing around either. They're not sort of hiding in, in the background either. And and having these two games this year, uh, I think are really like it's going to kind of a good sort of like yeah no we're 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 still here we're still yes. we're still making great games and just you wait until we can be able to like go with all like you know all guns blazing essentially. That's right. This, this is their last game, right? Like for the year, I guess. Uh, I think so. Other than the uh, God of War Ragnarok for PC, I yeah. think that's pretty much yeah. it. That's right. Yeah. 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 Oh. oh. Um, I know the the I think the lead director or someone from uh, Astro he was talking about there. There's no plans for VR for the game, but they are looking at, at the PC version of Astro Bot as well. So he's very he's very be, he's very kind of based on the PC. I hope there's going to be some some post launch content for the game in general. Yeah. Some DLC, Agreed. new levels. I I especially another pro like uh, it's minor nitpick again, but there like there are some like alternate outfits where it was mm. like. Why didn't they have that? <laughs> I, mean, I know, <laughs> I know. I would love like, to be able to change my outfit to, to be one of the ones like you of the bots you collected because that yeah. would have been so yeah. dang cool. And, there was a couple um, where I was like, I really hope this is one of them. Yeah, and it wasn't, and I was sad. Yeah. But uh, but oh, I mean, do you know what's for, also missing? What's that? I don't. Th okay, forgive me if I if I actually did miss it in in the settings. There's no photo mode. There is. There, there is, is okay, because maybe, okay, you know what? Right. Like early on, like he poses with like a cutout of something yeah. in, in one of the levels. Yeah. Um, you could take a photo then. And, well, like, I saw that for the screenshot, but there's yeah, no there's, like. There's. Is there a separate thing you can really get in the photo? Point, at some point, you will unlock uh, the the certain ability to do photo. Oh, mode. like a full photo. Ah, it, okay. it's not. Oh. It's not like. You know, don't don't expect like it's like Ghost of Tsushima's photo mode or anything. Like it's pause and add more bots yeah, on the super screen. Super bare bones. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but there is there is a like pause the game here, take a photo of stuff kind of. Okay. Thing. I wonder mm -hmm. if they were talking about the same thing. Are we talking like the ones that you basically go in behind the placards? And no, there, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's an actual different? photo mode. There's okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah we. Again, yeah, I haven't got that far uh, as of yet, so I'm looking forward to. Okay, okay, but I would love that, like, a, like a full because there would have been so many times, even the first level, that I would have like 
have gone back and be like, oh man, this would yes. look really cool with a photo mode right now. But all right, okay. I, well, I definitely get something. the customization part though gets to me. It's like, yeah, yeah, being able to customize your own Astrobot, like and just run around and do cool things. Uh, mm -hmm. as oh, these or also customize IPs. your PlayStation too, like your, your PlayStation Five, like the covers or the yeah, yeah. Uh, or even that's your controllers. That's what we, I'm we said, I can't remember if it was on this podcast or just we I were think chatting, we did in the podcast. Like it would have been so cool if like I got this controller plugged in and yes. that's the controller in the game. Yep. I feel like that would be impossible to code something like that. Um, but uh, that would have been awesome. That would have been, been awesome. Yeah, because I, pl I I play with uh, with my uh, dual sense yes, controller, and yes. I would have loved to seen that pop up. Uh, cool. the, like, but hey, if this is what honestly. I would I'm okay with it not doing that considering the fact that it is like the controller is the special Astrobot edition that's right of the controller that they do sell I'm hoping I can be able to get my hands on one because Me too. It, it, it's, it's a great <laughs> advertisement just to be able to buy that alone yes yeah, 100% yeah. Awesome. were you gonna say something before Camille no I, don't, I, I just really want to then... <laughs> customize my Astrobot that's all that's really I just wanted. hope they come with like the, all the guest characters they have little miniature figurines for that that'd be awesome yeah, uh funko you need to you need to step your game i don't up. want it as a funko I don't want it. I don't no want no no it has to be no, like in that be. design I it has do. to be in that astrobot design <laughs> like Funkos that are basic they're kind of in that, that, that design no, they have the face and yeah, the, but the face is a little different. big, like the, 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 oh, it's I, kind of in that same shape. are like the the anatomy of a of an astrobot. You think yeah. so? Yeah, right. the cheap way out. I don't want official ones from yeah. PlayStation. <laughs> I was just thinking of just because like, they already have the, the thing in like, place to create as many of them yeah. as they want. It's just I, I don't know. Like imagine <laughs> if they're a little bit harder than like a Funko, like in like a little not metallic-y, but kind of like where. I don't know. It'd just be cool. Like they're an actual like feeling of a bot, $40. like a hard sort of like shiny, <laughs> yeah, glossy plastic. Like a sh yeah, exactly. Like it's gonna cost way too much. Are you asking? Not really. It's it's plastic. Look, the amiibos <laughs> alone was like fifty. I mean, yeah, if it is the like, texture. Yeah. But here's the thing. Amiibo, That's why I said I Funko it. because they because a lot of them are also licensed IP for some of the PlayStation characters, and Funko yeah. has already a lot of licenses. That's what I was thinking of. Like, of, of I'm going pretty that sure route. we'll get a Funko, at least of the Astrobot, but oh, we I need hope a so. Yeah. It would be cool if we got other other bots yeah. like in the game as, as Funko. That'd be as well. pretty dope. Uh, did anyone see this epic thing today? Oh my God. I did. I did, <laughs> yes. Yeah. What, what, are we, what are we thinking? How are we feeling uh, about this? Yeah, the, the Minecraft. It's movie. Momoa, by the way. Yeah. You, you know. <laughs> yeah, what is he doing in this? Like, I, <laughs> like I knew Jack Black was playing Steve, <laughs> um, which was kind of funny. Like, Steve and I actually kind of uh, made this sort of um, like joke about we are Steve. Uh, yeah. It's just, uh, like, but the, I, I have. I don't know. It, 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 uh, it, 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 it's like Jack Black and uh, Okay, listen, listen. Here's what I'll say. Um, the designs for like the animals or like the the creeper, or, like some of the enemies and stuff, like that's all fun. Mm -hmm. Um, but man, like I understand that Minecraft world is not real. Okay, <laughs> like, yeah. but did we really have to shoot the entire movie exclusively on on green screens? Like it, yeah. It it I feel like, like there was volume totally sort of an avenue here for like practical sets and like effects and. You think like, this is all green screen? A lot. Based of on the it. trailer, it looks like it. it. Yeah. What? I don't think it is. I feel like the obviously like. The lighting Maybe is the, rough. Then I, it's something's just the very uncanny valley about it's it. It's kind of like you know how Barbie was filmed. That's kind of how I see this. I don't know though. Barbie, yeah, but the, Barbie still had that feeling of like tangibility to it. You know, yeah, I think that's why yeah. like at the so backgrounds. Much. It's like yeah, I could see that. You know, like that. That's why Barbie like popped so much for me because yeah. it was like oh, like all of that looks like they built like a seventies you know I mean? film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas like Minecraft, like a lot of it looks either your CG or just, but is that is like, so my thing, it's like, I, uh, uh, video game movies are <laughs> oh, in a way, you know, like, so it's like, no, 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 no
this and it's hoping another world, right? right? So, like, yeah, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. get my hopes up. I think one of the hardest things with an IP like Minecraft that has such a distinct look to it is trying to make that look tangible. Like, I yeah. think, like, there is actually, like, I'm just looking over it right now. I think there is some, like, a bit of, like, everything in the foreground is practical, um, yeah, there, there's probably like stuff that they're interacting with, like some of the environments that are closer sure. up are probably like real. But I would like well, it yeah. does look like it's very much they're they're standing on like a like a, a made platform, but with a green screen around them. Um, yeah. There's a couple of even, shots like, in that trailer where I was like, oh, like so when they <laughs> like when yeah. they enter, I do think like obviously the background is filled, but I do think there is practical like in that when they like see the sheep and everything i think it's like more when you get into like some of the action shots and this is my problem this was actually my problem with justice league is like when you have heavy cg for action and you're not doing that cg right it just looks off yeah you know well and it's it's like valley right like and it's like i think that's what my more of my issue with it it looks like just off in that front i think like it's trying to stylize the lighting of like, oh, it's always sunny in Minecraft and it's like a video yes. game kind of thing. And I think like that's also bleeding into this idea of it looks so fake. It but is, I think it also absolutely. is because of like everything is boxy. It's I, I, I'll like, say this. This movie is a trillion percent. Oh, it's so it's going to make a billion dollars. It's yep. like, Kids are gonna go see this in droves. They're gonna How love it. How many kids are still playing Minecraft? Are kids still playing a Minecraft? Lot. Oh, a lot. Jesus, it's a lot. Still, it's a part of the. It's even a Let's part of the education this. system. It is still in the gaming sector of YouTube. The still number one most searched video yeah. in, of videos of all of YouTube is the only Minecraft. thing that's even come close is Roblox, which is. Uh, hello what is that based off right yeah, like yeah, so, yeah. so like the, there's uh yeah it's it's still massive and the movie's yeah. gonna make a ton of money there's no doubt about that um and I like what you're saying we're, yeah. we're all sitting here like you know in our suits you know smoking whatever cigars being like mm, the minecraft movie you know what i mean like uh at the end of the day, it's like it's whatever, right? This is for kids. Like it's supposed yeah. to be just whatever. You know, if it turns out yeah. to be good, I'll definitely I'll right. definitely go see it. But there are two things that kind of stand out to me that like and I'm not trying to be a hater on it. I'm not like trying to be one of those th- th- like idiots on the internet that just want to pick up heart of everything. But yeah. I, I think there's two things here. A, I think this probably would have worked better as an animated movie. Yes. Uh, yeah, at, with the same actors playing these roles, and they're just you, they're, maybe there's a live action version where they jump into Minecraft and they turn in it turns into an animated form because I think that probably would have worked better with with the world. And in conjunction to that, the 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 creatures and things that are in Minecraft uh, in this look like when I don't know if you met, anyone ever saw any of these images around of like. Of people trying to be able to turn Pokemon into real life. Oh creatures. yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. Giving them like bone structure and 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 uh, uh, and like muscle stru- Like it just it tries to make them like as if they were real. That's what this kind of like looks like. I don't like. I never knew yeah. the creeper to be hairy, and yet I don't like it. This does, does not look right. I think just the overly realistic now designs of some of these, yeah, uh, right? these animals and creatures and things like that. It, again, it adds to that like uncanny valley aspect of the movie. Yeah, um, or, everything we think of. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, it's just like when I look at it, I'm like that. Like that looks like it's Minecraft, but like something's just off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing. I think it's so hard because, like, when you look at the trailer and you see um, the boy character grabbing like a block, right? Yeah. The CG is actually really good there. For well, that, right? is like, not bad. And even like um, when, for some reason, Jason Momoa is in this, like <laughs> he like makes the chain whatever yeah. thing up yeah, here. Yeah. Like it actually looks good, but there's something about it that's just so jarring for us because I think Minecraft has a vi- specific look in everyone's head. It's this huge, and it's very distinct. It's very different than anything else. Now trying to see that realized in this live action way where it's just like, oh, it's like you have to add the textures. It's hairy. You know, the creeper's hairy, actually. That's what it is. It's not just like the flat blocks. 
-hmm. is just weird. And I don't know if it's going to be something that like similar to the Nint the Mario movie, the Super Mario Brothers movie, where we would have to get used to certain things. Like there were things in the Super Mario Brothers movie with that first trailer where people were like, oh my gosh, this looks so good. But Chris Pratt's voice was like, you know, it was so jarring. We couldn't get over Whoa. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then it was like when we, well, well, I know for myself watching the movie, that didn't bother me. Yeah, me neither. Right? So it's yeah. like, I wonder if it's one of these things where we actually have to get like another glance, Luke another That's yeah. why I'm hoping, it. yeah. But yeah, thing. like also you pinned, you, you, you got that point, like the creatures trying to add structure to them. I think that's like what's so jarring to me right now. Yeah. It's like, why does this it's, wolf, like, this wolf is so weird. The, the movie, and kind of, like, motion stop animation would have also been, like, good, but it wouldn't make sense. Like, it's just weird that this is live action. Yeah. 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 Like, even, I get, like, to, like, 100% I'm on board for Jack Black as Steve. Like, it just okay, has... Okay, talk about this. Yeah. yeah, I think he looks great. The, but the, the Yvette Nicole Brown, and you got Jason Momoa, and I'm forgetting the actress's name, but she played, the, like, Wednesday's best friend in the in, in uh, Wednesday Adam uh, uh, Netflix show. Why are they like? I get the kid, the kid, the, the kid, and Steve 100% makes total sense. What are the other three doing there? It's totally <laughs> just like for 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 people who are like, oh, I know who Jason Momoa is. I will see the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. It really even with the crazy wild he's a, like he's a, he's a crazy wild. He's a wild you know what? I don't know. So I'll, I'll say this, and about it's Trek it's Black. just a correction. It's not in that. Um, it's Danielle Brooks. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Brooks. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're from Orange oh, Black. So, I think. Yeah. Just, just oh, okay. The, I thought it was community. Sorry. Talk about yeah, Jack yeah. Black. Listen, I, I love Jack Black. I love seeing him in anything. He was like probably one of the only, if anything, redeeming qualities of the Borderlands movie. Um, but like, really, Jack, you, you couldn't shave the beard. Couldn't like it. Right? Like, like, does he have so a, so a, exactly. a live action Steve from my Is there like, like a contract <laughs> to hold on to that beer for 10 years? Uh, that's like, what I'm saying. Like, Maybe. It's a magnificent <laughs> beer. I get it. I get it, Jack. But, it's one of the greatest beers yeah. in mankind. But, like, buddy. It, it'll grow back. It, 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 I, and that's why it, it's man. giving me like Jumanji vibes, where like he's thrown into this game, like, and maybe he was lost he in like, this. Yeah, he just you know what I mean. Like speed. he's an hey, look, older, look, and that explains like why he's like, an older I feel like person. Steve, like, uh, I feel like, like they just grabbed them from like, hey, Jack. Oh, Jack's here. Yeah, yeah I know. Get him in a second. blue sweater. You know, like, like seriously. Yeah. It, like uh, again, I feel like what they should have done with Steve is just make it like a Minecraft character in the game, yes. and then yes. have the human characters. You know what I mean? Can and then that the way, like, or the yeah, it's like that, you know? right? Yeah, I I'm don't know. Steve, and it just starts chewing. You know, like that'd be yeah, like enough. starts chewing on like a flat piece of bread, and just all yeah, of a sudden just right disappears, and he's not just in this voice. It. Yeah. It's so weird because, like, really I feel weird. like if you're a producer and you're making this movie, like, you have to know that. We're making a Minecraft movie. It's going to make a billion dollars. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. You literally just say Minecraft movie, and the kids are are their butts. Hundred percent. They're, they're going to go see it. Yeah. Um, and it's so weird that still, like, they they feel that we need to inject all these things that could potentially entice more people to. It's like you guys aren't going to make a ton of money already. So just like, just try and make something that's a little faithful and fun for people who love Minecraft. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And again, it feels really weird for me to get this deep into criticism talking about literally Minecraft. But like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like there could have been a little more. There could have been a little more care right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't even play Minecraft. I'm like, I, I don't know you guys did this right, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just, uh, I don't know. I, I think, it, it, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure. I don't know. It's just like, like I, I don't. I could totally again reserve the right to be able to say, yeah, this game, this movie's good. Like, I, I'm hoping it's good. I really want this to be good. It's just, I think probably the trailer just wasn't wasn't the type of trailer that we that really sold it. Um, I, I think that like I would I, I need to see more in order to be able to like to kind of get a more better thought of it. Because um, yeah, we're pretty much at that like at the stage of. Oh, Chris Pratt is Mario. What is that going to be like? And we're now yeah. we have to wait to kind of see what more to the this and, and for it to work. For so, sure. for sure, uh, definitely just like a wait and see for me as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I feel like any trailer they would have dropped also it just wouldn't do it justice because it's such a jarring concept sure. of like Minecraft live it's a, action. It's a very basic. It's like they have to win us over. Yeah, it's a very basic Hollywood type trailer. It's like it's what. 
Hollywood thinks that it needs to teach the world about what Minecraft yeah. is, uh, mm -hmm. instead of a lot of putting in like a lot of the Easter eggs of what of what Minecraft is. Sure, there's stuff in there that you like you recognize. Oh, it's Minecraft. I know that the pigs, you know, the 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 the, the, the llama. What? Oh, that's cute. Whatever. My but kid keeps talking about this Minecraft. Oh, that's uh, automatically default. Take them to the movies. You know. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to yeah. see more like proper like Easter eggs of like, for instance, again, we were talking about like if if Jack Black was like eating bread and it has the sound effect and it just kind of like like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, like he's yeah, not even yeah. actually eating it just kind of slowly just disappears uh and, and a bunch of crumbs like i think that like something yeah. like that that is an homage like is that is minecraft i would have loved to see them more i'm I, hoping I think they're, they're gonna the do that would. i think they're gonna do that it's just we I probably so. didn't see it yet one thing again with just the because i still can't pinpoint like what is it that's so jarring for me with this visually but like it's so empty in a sense so like when you're looking at the fields like where the the sheep is or the pig whatever it is um you have like the little flowers that show up on the textures for minecraft yep. but there's like no animals like no little birds tweeting like it's just very it feels empty so then when you go to like larger scenes it just looks grass like just grass right so yeah it's like very i feel like minecraft and the, this is something i think when we think of like video game movies it's like oh this would be a great video game movie a live whoever thought the live action would be a great minecraft movie right but it's like the details of it now like if you were to add a bird if you were to like add a butterfly in here would that all take away from like what we know minecraft to be so i don't know something's yeah. just it's off it's off yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I just want to bring up this the uh, this a quick discussion about the state of Xbox here because uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Collections wasn't originally coming out. It's coming out soon, seven days. Can't wait. Line up your quarters. Super excited. Um, I know it was, you have no idea. I'm ready. I'm, so I'm ready. So yeah. <laughs> um, and and then and the Capcom uh, Fighting Collections too. Capcom S and K coming later on, uh, but that wasn't originally coming out on the Xbox. Yesterday was announced it's coming to Xbox uh, because after a whole outcry and everything, no reason. To, I'm, we gotta figure out what, why, why it's not coming out on Xbox originally. But it gets coming to Xbox One, backwards compatible and everything. And then there's also reports of uh, the Etronada developer, um, like uh, I know I shared in, in, a, in a Discord, mentioning that they've been reaching out to Xbox. They haven't heard anything whatsoever. There has been an update to that, uh, saying that Phil Spencer and and, and Microsoft have actually reached out to uh, to them as well. And they're working closely to to bringing the game uh, over uh, as well. So, like, I just want to know, like, what, like, what's going, like, what's going on in the state of Xbox or something? There like was a lot. There's a lot of context that we were all missing. Everyone yeah. sort of took both those stories as like Xbox is doesn't care about fans or yeah. it doesn't care about trying to be able to get yeah. games on their platform or this the, articles the definitely like issues with the Xbox sure. series. As like the thing that infuriated me the most, like, sure, there probably was in maybe. Uh, uh, like there was some probably some tech issues or whichever trying to be able to get like basically the game to work because essentially it's Xbox One so it'll be compatible mm -hmm. in Xbox Series X and S but if you think about it, on PlayStation it's technically coming out on PS4 yeah. which means it's going to be compatible for your PS5 so it's not mm -hmm. actually coming on next gen consoles no oh, yeah the yeah. thing that pissed me off the most was the Antoria uh, dev in, in in the Discord saying that uh, Xbox is, is ignoring us and is ignoring you too. That infuriates me because that is the same type of uh, of grifter type language that we're seeing so much on the internet now that, that like we don't know the reason why they were that yeah. uh, that Xbox didn't like they didn't hear back from them for two months. It could be hey maybe think about the fact that they still had a bunch of people laid off. Maybe some of the people that were laid off was on the team that actually approves and gets certified games to be able to be on Xbox platform. Has anyone yeah. thought about that? Like, there's so many different reasons as to why uh, that it could like technical or even just policy or red tape reasons as to why Xbox hadn't contacted them. But it but it infuriates me that they were basically using that. And then the announcement today saying that they heard you on the internet. They they were outcry of you know of the fans trying to wanting this on Xbox, and now we won. I guarantee you, Phil Spencer was like, "What the fuck happened? Where? Why didn't they get they, they get approved? We, like, th there's no way in hell Xbox would refuse or ignore or ghost a developer who wants to bring their game onto their platform right now. So yeah. it's all bullshit, and I'm sorry. I'm that my rent done. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's totally like there's a myriad of, of things that we don't know going on behind the scenes, I imagine, that could mm-hmm. give you answers to all of these questions that people are having. It's just hard that when you look at the surface level of it all in that like what's like we don't know what what is happening with black myth wukong yeah that's another one there's no like one answer is saying that it has to do with playstation exclusivity another answer is saying that just xbox couldn't get that that xbox port ready in time um if it's the latter rather than the former it's like how are we not here's the thing though ready you know in regards to that and i could be i'm completely speculating right here but it just sort of it's just taking the larger context of just the video game industry in general outside of North America. Yeah. It the, the game science is from China. Yeah. Xbox has never really had a proper foothold in Asia at all. The fact that they only had one studio and they and they and they, and they closed it kind of shows the fact that that Xbox does not have a foothold. My guess, my spec complete 100% 100% speculation is that they probably didn't have a lot of developers who knew how to develop for Xbox. So they were trying to figure that could it out. Be it. That could and be. I, I, I know I'm, there's there's a lot of talk too about the Series S and some of the complications. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That. There are developers. And there's also like a report know. where like Sony may have came in and be like, "Oh, you know, what? we'll fund some of it." Exclusivity for you. deal. Sure. Yeah. It, was very, it was very hush hush about it. So, so you know, you're supposed too, to like they, release there was, that stuff. There was like, a developer I, I think that worked at Rocksteady that was talking about like a lot of challenges, and I'm not talking about Dell. I know Dell. Um, there was a developer previous to Dell who was talking a lot about the challenges that they had faced in making games for the Series S. Yeah. Um, and they were kind of lambasted for it back then, and they were like mm-hmm. really attacked pretty harshly online. Um, and then it kind of sorry, is my mic quiet? It just keeps. It, it was it. just yeah, it was lowering okay. by itself. I don't know. Um, so so I, I, I've noticed though more and more a lot of people into the the game developer space kind of come out and not necessarily echo those sentiments but say similar things in that like yes the series s does provide challenge to game certification because you need to make sure that the games like there has to be parity uh, for for xbox across all of their consoles right there for for the series x and the series s and that series s causes a lot of complications for these developers to the point where Maybe you see something like a Black with Black Myth Wukong where they wanted to release it on Xbox, but just couldn't get it ready in time for the Series S. So PlayStation kind of swoops in and says, "Here, let's let's get this exclusive for us." Because I mean, that game and its success is mm-hmm. bonkers. Like it's absolutely insane. And yeah, I mean, that's right. that's now like it's become largely a, a big sort of PlayStation timed exclusive. Um, but even, even on you the know, PC, even on the PC when you, side of things, right. And when you look yeah. to now at like, so one of the biggest Xboxes uh, releases this year is Indiana Jones, which I'm really looking forward to. It looks fantastic. I mm-hmm. just binged all the Indiana Jones movies with my girlfriend. We absolutely <laughs> love them. Even dial of destiny. I, I thoroughly enjoy dial of destiny. Oh, so wow, I cannot okay. wait for the new Indiana Jones game. I'm very, very excited for it, but you can see, it's such a quick turnaround on the timed exclusivity um, from when it's going to yeah. be exclusive to Xbox to when it's now going to be available to PlayStation. Um, and so there's just there's just some funky things going on. We don't know all the answers behind the scenes. I think it's it's hard for us to speculate and provide sort of the, what we think are the definitive answers. Yeah. Because I don't know, and, I, yeah. and nobody on this panel knows. Yeah. Um, and like I- you said, Steve, like Xbox suffered a ton of layoffs, and I imagine. Mm-hmm. That has created a lot of impact across the board, which they should have prepared. Why are you that? laying people off? Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? If you yeah. needed that sort of assistance to get these games ready, yeah. like it's, it's, a, it's like a, it's, a case of like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is that's doing. That's right. And that's yeah, what right. Xbox has, has had issues with pretty that's much they, this sure. entire time. That's um, their biggest challenge, and it's why they're falling so far behind. And it's why, kind of, not necessarily the last ditch effort, but why sort of the, the Hail Mary right now for Xbox is. We're just going to put our games everywhere on all platforms, mm-hmm. which is great mm-hmm. for consumers, for sure. sure. Amazing that everyone gets to play Indiana Jones. I'm super yeah. happy about that. And one day, that's going to be for Halo 2. You know, that's going to be for for Gears of War. All of these yeah. major Xbox exclusives are just going to be available everywhere. And that's awesome for consumers. But it's sort of kind of like you can read it as Xbox knows they've lost the race now. Like, it's over. Um, PlayStation is so far ahead. Nintendo is so far ahead. So the best course of action from here is just 
let's just play along with the top players. You know what I mean? Let's just yeah. have fun yeah. with them and let people enjoy all of our games, which again, great for consumers, but it's, it's tough for competition because competition yeah. can be healthy, right? It can be good for, for, for gamers as well. When you got Xbox succeeding, when you got Nintendo succeeding and PlayStation, Mm -hmm. Quick question. When did the developer claim they like put the like started the process? Like did they for, skip for timelines? Yeah, for Antori. Uh, they sure. said two months they they said they hadn't heard anything from Xbox in two uh, months. There you go. Yeah. Like my thing is like even like just basic processes when people submit something in like development, like you have so many indie developers that may want to have their games available. Like, I feel like there should be a time frame. I don't know if they disclosed a time frame, but if you're not able to meet that time frame, like when you submit the application or whatever it is, and you get that automatic response back, oh, thank you for your application. Like we're processing it. Like put, it could take up to six months. Like, you know, it could take mm -hmm. up to three months. It could, you know, give, and I think like that's just basic courtesy is like, just give some sort of time frame of like when they should know by then having someone in limbo. And like, it could be where the left hand isn't speaking to the right hand, but also with these layoffs, there's, we, we don't make the big bucks. Other people do at those companies, and their jobs are to put process in place. So it's at least communicated that it could take longer than expected, right? Um, yeah. And I think if there's a communication there, like that, and again, I haven't looked too much into the specific story, but like if it's very uh, clear that there has been communication that gives a timeline that is still within that, then I don't think the developer has any reason to complain. But if there has been zero communication and nothing in terms of what to expect, next steps, whatever, yeah, then I do think Xbox is kind of at fault there. Yeah. yeah yeah for me like and like like and, like i just want to bring it back to the capcom thing as well like if their solution was to bring the games to xbox one the same way how they did it to to playstation why wasn't that done at, at the and beginning the, like let's be real so, like this, the is first Marvel, this is marvel's capcom we're talking about, right? capcom, which has been <laughs> on like xbox consoles before this is like, a 2d low demand fighting yeah low demand fighting, yeah, low demand fighting game and like if it's like an mt frameworks issue like the first collections was on, on, on but Xbox. see, that's why yeah, I think no it's problem. a reoccurring issue, like across multiple games. I feel like there's something deeper there um, that developers may be dealing with. Um, and you know, like you said, Kabiz, like we've heard developers outwardly speak about issues when trying to get things on to Xbox. Yeah. Um, maybe it is that shift of focus of just trying to have it play everywhere. But if you're not having it played on your own console, then what's the point? That's right. Yeah, it just I don't know, it just seems like every other game people are like, "Where's the Xbox version?" And then they make a stink about it. And then like Xbox, and like then it gets Xbox attention. It seems like, you know, mm -hmm. so. yeah. But, uh, which like again, I think it's just it. There's a lot of it. Basically, comes down to again, there's a lot of context that is missing. Yeah. Um, we don't know the hundred percent reason as to why things aren't are like with it, whether it's the Series S or if it's technical reasons or if it's exclusivity deal reasons the right now no one's talking uh mm -hmm. and the only ones who are talking are the ones who shouldn't be talking uh yep. about it because it just it just adds like to to the, the, any and any speculation just kind of gets blown up to, like 100,000 percent yeah and exactly yeah. and it just and it, it only it, and it's and not to say it's it's entirely xbox's fault because mm -hmm. they this is what happens when you are uh, silent on some things and loud about others, and yeah, uh, and and it's again, it just comes down to they they just have never been able to figure out how to communicate. And yeah. as we said, it's the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. When you have a company as large as as or as Microsoft, the, like an Xbox becoming as huge as it is with all the studios that they have under their belt. There and a lot of teams that are being that are being shifted around or becoming uh, uh, like uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for um, uh, like where they are not needed anymore uh, essentially uh, become redundant um, or a lot of other things that could basically come like that it, it, it's the trouble of trying to be able to run a several thousand employee uh, company corporation yeah. a lot of things are getting dropped and a lot of balls are getting dropped and it's 
and 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 it's really up to like essentially xbox leadership to be like what's going on do we have like what what kind of that we need to reorganize our, our management structures where it's less redundancy or there's less uh, red tape to go through what is it because right now it's it's the little it's the tiny cuts that are hurting them instead of the big ones yeah yeah, yeah. angry absolutely all right last topic sadly is a tough one as well um, uh, this one comes from, uh, Ryan Ellis, the game director of, from Firewalk Studios, Concord fans. Uh, we've been listening closely to your feedback since launch of Concord on PlayStation 5 and PC. We want to thank everyone who has joined the journey of, of, aboard the North Star, your support and the passion and the passion passionate community that has grown around the game has meant the world to them. However, they, they've, uh, while many qualities and experience resonate with players, we recognize that the aspect of the game and the initial launch didn't didn't land the way we intended. Therefore, at this time, which was yesterday, uh, we decided to take the game off uh, game offline, which is going to be happening in on Friday, September six. Exploring options, including those uh, that will better reach our players. So, if you want to get a refund in this game right now, you can't even buy this game anymore, even though. I did Oof. see some some scummy scummy uh, game stops selling it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, they're, they're, wait, they're, what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can, can I can I just be honest? Um, yep. the, the, between this news and 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 recently there was there was news about a round of layoffs at Rocksteady. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of like yeah. dancing on graves. You know what I mean? Um, especially like. A lot of like meme posts that were put out about Concord. People being like, mm -hmm. "Oh, I just got this copy, physical copy of Concord. Can't wait yeah. to jump in and play." And it's like, uh, like I don't know. Okay, listen. In in this instance for for Concord, like I can understand mm -hmm. that it's like all in good fun. At the, at the end of the day, like we don't know if the studio is getting shut down. All that they've said is they're taking the servers offline. They're pretty much doing what happened to Multiverses, if anybody yeah. remembers. Yeah. They they took it down. They're reassessing what they're going to do with the game and going to try maybe to relaunch at some point in the future with a better plan and a better outlook um, that could bring in some more players. Um, and, and that's, I think that's the outcome that I hope for. I don't want it to be a situation of PlayStation just cutting their losses and saying, you know what, this studio it didn't work out. You guys are done. Um, because we played Concord, me and Steve Saylor, Marcel, we all played. And mm. like, listen, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's the greatest game I've ever played or anything like that. There's certainly some issues, um, but I felt like there was a foundation there for a solid game. And mm -hmm. if they had a better roadmap, if they had some better like visuals, costumes, like customization for these characters, I think there could have been a lot more that would have enticed players to want to stick around yeah. um, or just enticed players in general to want to jump in. Um, but there just wasn't enough there from day one, even from those betas that, that, you know, it got enough interest for the game's uh, actual launch. Uh, certainly, this is unprecedented, right? Um, but I just, I don't know. I just wanted to comment on, like, especially too with Rocksteady and the layoffs. There are a lot of people saying, oh, they deserved it because they made a game that people didn't like. It's just, it's so no, ridiculous to me. Like, oh, you know, me, like, yeah. not, I, not liking a I game should not well, mean yeah. that we're, we're, like, championing the, the idea we're, that people who just yeah. made the game they were told to make. Are getting laid, laid off, off, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, there was, there was I saw that that somebody on their paternity leave was yes. made uh, redundant. Yeah, yeah. from, from very, Rocksteady. That is that, very that is not hear. something anybody in their right mind should be celebrating. You know yeah. what I mean? Like this yeah. is that that is ridiculous to me. And and yeah. there's been a lot of that with Concord too, which I'm not the personal personally the biggest fan of. Um, as somebody who's met developers who who knows like how tough this industry is this year, especially the amount of layoffs is astounding. Um, it's like unbelievable. It's insane to look at the numbers. Uh, so there, there should just never be like a moment of celebration for a game to not perform well. Like I thought we wanted games to be good. Like I thought yeah, we exactly. wanted yeah. like the best possible outcome out of every single game that releases. I, I don't know where this whole concept of like cheering on the failure of video games has come from, but it's starting to get like ridiculous. Yeah. I, I definitely ridiculous. see that. Yeah. Uh, all, like I have, I just looked. I have 194 comments on something that I said on Twitter uh, about, like, hey, I'm just sad for the devs that have had to go, are basically getting, uh, having to go through this and having a game that basically that they put their heart and soul in, uh, are, are getting uh, like, are, are, are basically their 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 hopes and dreams or whatever of making this game great is gone, and then seeing 
just the vitriol that I've uh, I've seen just in the comments. I had somebody that I called out uh, uh, the other day as well when this when this news broke of uh, that they someone said that they should be blacklisted from the entire industry yeah, because ridiculous. of how bad like how badly they made their game. And I'm like, excuse that's me, ridiculous. fuck off! Like yeah. you don't like. The, the, yes, there are definitely like the game is a failure in 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 the in the financial sense and the player base sense. It didn't hit in everything that uh, uh, that 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 they cre- that they created. But it doesn't mean that basically that that these developers should basically be run out of tarred and feathered of the industry or you know walking down the uh, 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 Game of Thrones, walking down the street, yeah. having to be able to shame on you every, every every chance they get. There was decisions that were made that were that beyond like I don't think an environmental artist is the reason why that this game failed. Like it or a motion capture director was the reason why this game failed. Like there's multiple different reasons as to why the developers i've never seen any developer try to be able to create uh, a, a game that is a, a, like to, to be a failure they make a game because they want people to play their game and enjoy it so yeah like i just you know if you are listening to this and you and you disagree with all we're all we're saying you can just fuck right off and never listen to this podcast ever again okay so yeah yeah mm-hmm. i think it's like it, it's I'm with you you know before we used to say like the trolls have just gotten out of hand on the internet. Twitter's also like the worst place to be right now. Um, (laughs) But like, I think it's like where, you know, kind of a little bit of art imitating life. And it's like where before I would question like, okay, I know people actually don't believe this crap that they're spewing online because they just want to be a troll. But now I'm like, I feel like their online trollism is now becoming the perception in real life, like having conversations with people, it's like, oh my gosh, that game was horrible. No surprise, they're going to get laid off. Uh, well, that's what their team did. You know, it's like, well, we should still have a bit of empathy there for people that are losing their jobs in the middle of a leave or just not aware of like, what is going to happen in the next week because they were actually following and doing a good job based on the direction that they were given. Right. And, and that's why, you know, how volatile the industry is that that needs to change. That's why unions need to be in place. That's why all this stuff is so important. Right. And and it's like, and it's, and it's just like upsetting that, you know, there, there were so many other ways I thought PlayStation could have went with this. Um, well, with the studio going like this and with the backing, um, that PlayStation could have given them where it's just like, this doesn't like, I, I, we knew they were having low numbers. We were kind of like talking about that. Um, but like you would never expect a game that just came out two weeks ago and had millions of dollars of marketing behind it um just to now be wiped off of <laughs> everywhere and yeah. it's like a lot this of never ha- this has like, never happened before it's like a lot of <laughs> money cyberpunk, technically it's but a lot of yeah t- cyberpunk but yeah. that like is cyberpunk i think was more hopeful uh in terms of like the future of it sure concord yeah. i think some of the issues that fans have been having with it is like PlayStation is very known for like story based games that have a lot of personality. We were just talking about Astrobot. There's so much personality in there. The story may not be as deep, but it stands out. With Concord, there was no identity that, you know, really made it feel like something else, like an experience you didn't want to miss. And I think that we talked about it, uh, you know, before, like that was kind of like what we were wanting to see of it to just then shut down that game and not say, hey, you know what? Let's just. Like you said, take it off the servers. Let's see how we could rework it. And I know that they're going about this, but the hopes of this does not seem hopeful. The fact that they're giving people their physical copy, their full refunds, refunds, refunds. like it's just kind of like, that's a lot of money to invest to take a game offline um, rather than to say, we're just pausing it right now. Um, I mean, they are doing the right thing by giving refunds and, you know, understanding that people the fans that were interested in it did buy and did give their money to this game. And it's good that they're able to get their money back, but it's just, it's just really unfortunate that this happens to happen. And it just really gets me scared for what this means for the studio um, in the future. And anyone who worked on this project, I'm pretty sure is like in a state of panic right now and has 
really high anxiety that I'm just getting anxious talking about it. Um, So I can't even begin to imagine what they're going through. And it's just so unfortunate. I don't even care to like spend time talking about the trolls. I think it's just, that's why it's so important to support the games that you love and to support the industry as a whole, right. And have positive conversations about the industry. If you don't like something, you don't have to say it, and uh, I'm tired of giving you, and having the like same conversation of like professional about it. You don't, well, yeah, you don't have to convince me that yeah. I, that, so about that, well, I didn't like this part of the game. You didn't like it. Just yeah, tell you, say you don't like it, and we can move yeah. on from that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I love something. I'm not going to like grab people by the ears and be like, you should love it too. You know what I mean? I'm just going to, I will exclaim what I love about X, Y, Z thing and kind of and move why, on with my life. Yeah, why it may be for you, why it may not be for you. Like it's, yeah. it, I think we're just like, we have to be like people believe they have to be right all the time. And it's not about being right. It's just being about like a, a gamer and loving the industry and loving the thing that you do, whether yeah. it's a hobby or to connect with your friends on another level or as an industry that you work in, why would you put it down so much? So then you have nothing in the end. Like it doesn't and, make sense. And I, I'm just tired of having the same old conversation. And, and also like, it's, it's incredibly, it's ironic that in, in this industry, we, we, there, there's a lot of games that want to chase certain trends, right? Yeah. Um, for, everything's trying to be Fortnite. Everything's trying to be the next Apex Legends or the next Call of Duty Warzone, right? Um, but we don't look at certain examples like 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 Fortnite, um, which didn't launch as a battle royale. Yeah. Nope. Um, and launch completely, is a completely different game. <laughs> completely tanked. Wasn't very popular. Everyone was like, "What is this? What's going on?" Not really the biggest fan of this generic zombie game. And instead of just saying, all right, let's shut the doors on that one and move on to the next one, Epic wanted to innovate and continue to invest in this game where they felt there was a foundation there. Gameplay was still solid. There was something with the building that they felt the per- branding of it, here, the right? branding of it, like yes. there was so much to go the on. The look yeah. and the the colors and the visuals, they felt like no, there's something here. Let's just try this out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yes, mm-hmm. granted, they were chasing trends from PUBG, so they tried to make their own battle royale. But still, they were doing something different, doing something unique mm-hmm. to the point where now it is the biggest game on the planet, right? Yeah. And then you uh, you have other examples like Final Fantasy 14. Oh, we lost Marcel, and he's recording this. Game. <laughs> it's a I think it's, it's recording, recording off of the site. Still- oh, recording, yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh God. I don't know. I, I, what we oh, oh, I don't know what happened okay. there. I was, All right. I was I was like, I didn't think was- <laughs> We don't want to hear your opinion. No. There you go. So, no, I don't know what happened. So, so like, so you weird. know, sorry, I was saying like <laughs> games like Final Fantasy 14, right? Another yeah. perfect example of a game where it was a complete failure. They, they had this yeah. massive comeback story. No Man's Sky, another great mm-hmm. example of yeah. a game that Cyberpunk, did not right? meet expectations. Yeah. Cyberpunk. Yeah. These are all games. That like and and Concord, I feel like falls in line in that there is a solid foundation there. If mm-hmm. we just if we don't just say, all right, let's just wipe the dust off on this one and move on to the next one. Maybe you can find the success that you were looking for out of this game. I know that it's hard to convince investors or or the the higher ups to want to put more money into something that lost them money yeah but those risks are what led to the biggest games out there right now yeah and and yep. that's the thing right because it's like you have a good point like i think the thing would the best case scenario would to be like you bring concord back or reskin it as another ip that is like very a very notable ip yeah. something like guardians or you throw you, you maybe like a brawler or like not it's not really a brawler but maybe it's like a a game with all the PlayStation IPs in them you know like there there could be or something there in terms of the foundation because it's something that PlayStation mm-hmm. has never done before but the fact that they are making this decision again has me concerned with like you know what is the direction and we talked about this earlier in the year now that we've been a year old uh, but earlier <laughs> in the year where we weren't sure of the direction that PlayStation wants to go um, what is to come after this? Like, what is next, especially after those leaks happened? Um, yeah. And I, I, that is, you know, aside from how horrible this is, aside from, like, the hope that we have, that is concerning to me 
that they were able to make this decision that does seem really rash considering that it's only been two years. Like what does this yeah. mean for what they look forward to? Yeah. Uh, you well, know, and, also, and I really hope that the team working on this is able, if it is not Concord or not reskinning this, this, the mechanics in this game, this gameplay into something else. I hope that they're able to still stay within the family of PlayStation and work on something else. Agreed. Also like what it, like what is the future of uh, games like marathon or, or uh, was it fair plays or fair games, whatever. Um, uh from uh, the jade raven's uh studio um i like because those are designed to be games of service and this was designed in that sort of in, in a playstation initiative that's what kind of shocked me the most was was why the pull uh, off the like completely off of store shelves uh, i can see them shutting things down uh potentially but uh, and and i can understand that like i don't know it just seemed like it was a it was a weird decision like it almost like it, it was uh, uh like it was a, sort of a, supposed to be a break glass in case of emergency but instead of hitting a button to basically to to shut things down for a bit it was let's just nuke the whole thing yeah. um and 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 i i don't know i don't know what it like what it could have done or what the or what playstation has working on behind the scenes or what firewalk is uh is doing to and i and i i really really do hope it comes back i want this to be a hey this was like a a, a big kind of comeback story uh for them um because as you said like there's a, there's a there's a good game in there um there's a solid game in there and i think that it just needs it just needed time like yes this is uh, this is the the smallest game game uh, gameplay base uh, or player base that we've seen in any kind of major like triple A essentially uh, release like where it's less than a hundred people playing, which was kind of also baffled me too. It's like I don't understand how that even happened uh, because it seemed as if like because the numbers didn't match up with the fact that we were that we were playing it and we were getting. Like we weren't having to wait long for matches, and also we were playing against other people. Like we weren't playing uh, a repeat of the same people over and over again, and we were playing for a good couple, solid couple hours. Uh, but I don't know. It just there's a lot. Of, again, it's kind of going back to the Xbox conversations. Like there's a lot of context that we don't know what's going on. That we're just a lot of people are are speculating and thinking the worst of. Yeah. That yeah. instead of thinking about okay. What what can we do to be able to try to build to make the, to to make this work? What can we do to be able to make sure that the studio is going to be okay? Uh, because that because I fear that now like seeing that that is what PlayStation is the, the mo to do is just pull the game. I can pretty much guarantee we're probably going to see within less than a month time we're going to see the either a studio closure or just a massive layoff, yeah. which yeah. is I hate to see. Uh, like I don't like I I just don't understand how our gaming industry billion dollar industry. Where other industries such as you know movies could you know have a huge flop of a movie, but yet ours is like like people are afraid to fail now. Where like if they if their game doesn't hit their target, that means like well that means someone's gonna get laid off now type of yeah. type of scenario. And I, I think you know? it just goes back to the structure, right? Like when you have these investors yeah. that are investing in like. Uh, mainstream entertainment and i know gaming is mainstream entertainment but more in the traditional sense and they have history of information to kind of go with the trends and the stats gaming is still pretty new when you're looking at that so you're mm -hmm. having these investors that are still making history as they go and they're setting the trends they don't know what the trend is and especially because trends are set so regularly in gaming um it, it just makes it more of a risk i think in their eyes to invest as much in the longer term for gaming but that that's what we need we need these long long-term investments in order to secure developers at their studios yep yeah, it's all really, really unfortunate. Um, hate to see, and it's also just really unprecedented. Like we've never seen something like this, I think, ever yeah. in the history of gaming. The game came out two weeks ago, and the servers are going offline. Um, that's just that's just crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. We'll, we'll I guess we'll see what the future holds we'll for see, the yeah. game and for the studio. Wishing all of them the best, though, and hoping for a bright future ahead. Absolutely. Uh, with that being said, Kimia, what's going on for you for the rest of the week? Um, when does this come out tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. So tomorrow I have Twitch Rivals. 
Um, oh, today. So I, I, as of when you're listening. Yeah. Well, no. Today. Tomorrow. Today. Also Friday. When this comes out. Friday. Oh, yeah. so Friday. Yeah. Got Twitch <laughs> rivals. So uh, that's going to be fun. I had a blast my first time around with them. Um, so I'm looking forward again. Yeah, I'm not taking any more screenshots of you because last time you, you you blasted me for. Some- <laughs> well, who takes a screenshot when someone's like confusing you and Sammy somehow? Like, you, you know, tagged me know. as Sammy. I did not tag you as Sammy. In, in no. our chat, you were like Sammy. No, I said you. That's why it, me and Sammy you know, were like, "What? I'm going." No, okay, you, you, you did. You did. Did do that by accident, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. You did. This is how I know you guys. How dare you you're talking yourself. about? None of and you that's why right Sammy and I were about. Me, huh? No, because First you tried when, to silence me. No, no, no. Because <laughs> Sammy was talking, and I said, "Hold on a minute." Camille, like, how was the thing? And then like, people were like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? Wow. I didn't do it, you know? Wow. You know what? I appreciate the screenshot. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be aside. there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to be doing that. And then um, really, it's just, I still haven't decided on TwitchCon, so. I'm I am thinking of going. going. I'll You're be going? there. Yes. You're going? I'll be there as well. Yeah. You're going? I got Wait, the panel. Sorry, yeah. what? What was the question? TwitchCon. I think all three of us are going to TwitchCon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe I'm going. I do go. Hmm. There you go. You could. Hey, you know, it's only a couple weeks away. It's San Diego. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I actually know. literally looking at my tickets to buy right now. So the flights. Mm, maybe uh, I've, I've, they're them. expensive. The you know, like it's just, yeah. I don't understand how expensive flights could get. <laughs> Just for I a round mine, trip, a it's ago, it was thousands of dollars. Yeah. 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 And the fact that, like, the thing is, is it's, it's half that to go just two hours north to LA. Like, what? <laughs> yep. Doesn't make any and, like, sense. Four hours in LA, like you know. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm excited. I'm uh, I'm yeah. excited for that TwitchCon. Yeah, it's gonna be good. So. Yeah. Um, Boost. What about you? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be playing some more Astrobot. I am also playing a ton of Fortnite lately because the Marvel season had been really fun. Um, and Doctor Who. you Fortnite. Fortnite. I'm back in, you know, um, so I've been having a lot of fun with that, but also I'm just hyped and getting ready for Marvel Rivals in a couple of months. I'm so stoked that that's coming out this year. Still a couple of great games left for the remainder of the year, and 2025 is going to be massive for Crazy. gaming. So I'm, I'm also just looking forward to that. But yeah, you can check me out on YouTube at uh, YouTube.com slash Caboose, and then I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. Awesome. And then Steve bought yeah, you be able to uh, find me uh, pretty much everywhere. Yeah, I always try to change up every week. Uh, you can be able to find me uh, at Steve Saylor pretty much on all uh, socials, uh, but also uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, because I've got a few reviews uh, that are going to be going up for uh, accessibility reviews. I've got, uh, as of today, with this recording goes up, uh, I'll have my, review, my accessibility review of Astrobot. Uh, but nice. I also have on there uh, my accessibility review of Age of Mythology Retold. Uh, I took a look mm. at the, that. And then I've got uh, two games that are coming up that I've got review codes for that I'm actually pretty excited nice. about. Ooh. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so stay Ooh, tuned for that. Oh, cool. Uh, for me, I'm getting ready for Marvel's Capcom Fighting Collection. So I'm just editing. Yes. Oh, my God. I totally forgot to mention that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out seven days, seven days, really soon. And then also Final Fantasy is coming out on PC as well. Ooh. I'm looking forward to that. And of course, God of War. Is like, and then Mortal Kombat See? is the same. Yeah. Chaos There's Reigns so many, this month. This so month. Many this this yep. month is nuts. That's honestly, right. this month. It's and a lot. Harry comes out. Zelda comes out as well. We I have cannot wait. Yeah. Zelda. Because yeah. of wisdom. Like, oh, Oh my so lord! Good. I'm so sad that I that uh, that I didn't go to PAX because I like oh, been seeing some it? people playing it. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I I actually might start switching east to go to west instead. You that think? Might eh? be more that might be more catered to us for like for business type of thing because they show. Wait, up. what? Where are you going to east? PAX East. I might, uh, west uh, okay. east. Switch. Yeah, I might switch. I go to east all the time because it's close. But it's west more has like, always been the bigger one. Yeah, no? I feel like west, west, has been, has been, west has been like. Like business, like everyone shows yeah, up. I think true. from what I've uh, from what I remember, East is the is the is the bigger one for fans, but West has yeah. always been the kind of the more industry side. True, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Because like people, Paris had like an hour alone with Zelda and everything. Played yeah, yeah, I did. Let me just clarify that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what's going on for me for this week, and then I'm uh, getting ready for TwitchCon. So, and we will see you all here uh, next week. Bad episode.
Bye. Bye. Bye.